the 2022 LQHBA Hall of Fame inductee, He's a Fast Dash. The son of He's a Fast Man out of the Dash or Cash Mare first prize dash was bred in Oklahoma by prominent horsewoman Watona Stanley. In his racing career, he made 18 starts, winning three races, and was runner-up in the Grade 1 Remington Park Futurity for conditioner Rodney Reed. He's a Fast Dash retired with earnings of over $136,000, but it was in the breeding shed where he would make a name for himself in Louisiana. It all started with James Pruitt, who was a very prominent bloodstock agent in the corner horse industry. Um, he called me a couple of times, asked me to go into Oklahoma look at a horse by the name of He's a Fast Dash. I think it just won the Blue Ribbon, or I think the Blue Ribbon for Charity. Rodney Reed had him, and uh, he was in, I think, in Tulsa, uh, the Tulsa racetrack. He was very persistent. James would call me and call me, and, you know, you need to come see him. And he was by, he's a fast man who I wasn't really impressed with at the time, uh, and I knew he had some other breeding problem. And uh, when James finally gave him, get me to go look at him, he wanted Claude Jimmerville, Coulon's number. And I promised Kulon not to give him his number, and I didn't. But he ended up getting a hold of Kulon. Kulon called me, said, you know, we want to Oklahoma look at this horse. And I said, I told him, I said, I don't I have no interest in going. I don't want to go. But Kulon was persistent about it, and we drove up there, looked at the horse, and, and uh, ended up buying the horse uh, while we were there. Uh, you know, looking at it, he's a fast dash, you know, he's not a flat, he wasn't a flashy horse, he had no, you know, very, I don't even I think he maybe had a little white, I don't know if he had any white in his feet, but not, not just a brown, big looking horse. But when you took him out the stall and looked at him, he was well balanced. Uh, he had tremendous bone, which we needed in the industry at the time. And um, correct, you know, and uh, good footed. Uh, but when you really look, it was hard to look at him because he's a brown horse, you know. Uh, but he, he, he was correct. He looked more, I compared, me and Ryan compared him to Streak in the Hoya. He looked a lot like Streak in the Hoya. Not quite as long a body as Streak in the Hoya, but uh, kind of a cow bred looking horse. And uh, so we knew we had to breed some, some mares with some leg on them, you know, and, and uh, eventually we had to bring to some of the thoroughbred mares, which he produced on. But um, to look at him, he wasn't something that was just gonna catch your eye. But once you took him out and studied him, there was nothing wrong with him. He had all, the, all everything that fell into place. The structure was correct. The six-figure purchase was a huge risk to the Louisiana horsemen at the time, and they were not sure if the acquisition was worth the risk. But horse agent James Pruitt convinced them that forming a syndicate would be prudent, and David Smith and M.C. Morris joined Jumanville and Robichaux as investors. You know, when James we bought the horse, James immediately syndicated the horse. So 19 shares, there's some pretty prominent beat readers, you know, four sixes bought a share. Uh, uh, I think Bobby Cox bought a share at the time. Uh, Joe Biden, I'm talking about people that stayed in, in his syndicate throughout his year. Joe Biden, Billy Foreman, Philip and Rodney D. Benedetta. Uh, David Smith got in in the beginning with us. Uh, he was, David was part of the syndicate on uh, original uh, horse on But, um, uh, those people stuck with the horse throughout his career. And at first, it was mostly syndicate members that bred to him, I think, the first two. I think if you look back, his first crop we only had maybe 45, 50 yearlings, you know, out of that first crop go to the sale. And, um, but once his babies got to the track and started running, it started, he kind of took off then. So he was, he was worth more money than what we, they acquired him for. And to come back and what Pruitt did and get some of the industry's leaders to buy part of the syndicate. So we knew we were gonna get some good mares going to him right off the bat his first year. I think that was the key to his success right off the bat. And for those guys, I mean, you know, Pruitt had a lot of good owners, but those guys to trust that, hey, this horse made you feel comfortable, you know, he was the right investment to go with. He never looked like a race horse. He looked like a rope horse, you know, he wasn't, a, he was 15-1, 15-2, but just real big bodied, you know. Uh, big forearms, big shoulder, big hip, and he threw that into his babies, you know. Uh, real, real strong, not real big horses, but a lot of body, a lot of muscle, and one thing about him and his babies, very, very smart, you know what I mean? Uh, and I think that's what he threw a lot in was his, his sense, you know what I mean, where they didn't flip over in the gates, they wasn't high strung, they didn't have that wide eye, 
They just knew their job, easy to get along with, and I think that's why trainers love them the most. He's a fast dash into 2006 as the number two leading first crop sire of money earners with 20 winners and earnings of over $686,000. A top three sire in his second and third crop as he also climbed into the top 10 leading sires of money earners for the list for 2010, which he remained on that list throughout the rest of his career. In 2013, he's a fast dash was the number one leading sire of money earners in the nation with earnings of over $3.7 million. And after 13 crops, tiring earners of almost $36 million, which places him eighth on the AQHA racing list of all-time leading sires by money earned. And the top runners of He's a Fast Dash include Isa Just Jumpin, earned of over $932,000, and the winner of 15 out of 21 starts, including the Lee Berwick Memorial for Charity, a restricted grade one event, Dashing Under a Full Moon, also a Lee Berwick Memorial Futurity winner, Old Time Preacher Man, winner of the LQHBA Million Futurity, other notable runners, he's a Louisiana Dash, earner of over a half million dollars, just to name a few. You know, in my industry, as far as standing stallions, and, and because we home in Louisiana, you know, Louisiana bread deal, he's a fast dash was the first sire to go up to 8,000. And being a syndicated horse, there was only so many breedings we had. So if they were all sold, people were dying to have one. I'm like, you can call a shareholder, see if I can, I can sell you a share breeding. Well, at that time, 8,000, they were all booked up. Some shareholders priced them at 10 or 12. And getting it done, like, no problem. Here's your 12, here's your 10. And he was the first sire in Louisiana to ever stand for that kind of money. And he just set the mark of what stallions could stand for in the future. Dad, he put a lot of heart in them. So, probably the biggest thing of everything of that horse, put a lot of heart in him. The horse didn't have to stay in the state of Louisiana to do any good. I mean, you could go out of state and he did good. I mean, any state he did good. So, that's a great honor when you have a horse in state could do good and he go out of state and do good. So, uh, that means a lot. I think he put a lot of soundness in the horses, put a lot of bone longevity on, on some of his babies. You know, he ran four or five years old. And uh, I think that as for his contribution to, to the breed, you know, I think that's what he did. You know what I mean? Uh, his daughters are producing. Uh, he's has a few sons out there standing that are doing you know, well. Um, but I think confirmation-wise, his biggest contribution, you know, soundness is really putting his babies. You know. He's a fast dash, just kept us at the top every year. You could always count on him, you know what I mean? Like, it's nice to have a horse in a barn that you know he's going to be in contention, he's going to have one or many that qualify each time. And uh, it kind of just sets up your year every year that takes some pressure off of you. You know, when you're getting these young horses, will they produce? Will I get mares to them? But when you had fast dash in the barn, you know you were going to be overbooked, you know what I mean? You know people were coming to breed to him, and you knew every year he was going to throw a big runner, or many big runners a year. So it just took the pressure, and it just gave you a, a, a thing of confidence every year that you were going to have a Futurity winner, a Derby winner from him, and he was going to keep you at the top, and he did. He kept us at the top mark year after year, and that's one reason why I miss him so much, is just you don't have that confidence as when I had him in the barn. He, he's, he's probably one of the, in the top three greatest sides in the state of Louisiana that ever was here. Uh, you know, he, 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 he planted a seed here in the state. I mean, even the mares that, that, that he have, fast dash mares, they're going to re reproduce. So, I mean, they're sitting good, you know. He wasn't the easiest one to collect, you know what I mean? He, he was picky about the mares he liked each day, and I spent many hours of my life with that horse and uh we he, we spent many days walking the highways and looking for him to collect those days and he finally had found one and we ended up buying that mare and uh she was old Peyton mare and that was his girlfriend forever and and I, I do miss him because he kept me at the top and it's hard when a horse is you with him every day and for him not to be there yeah, it, it means the world to us here at Robichaud to honor a horse that meant so much to us, you know, uh, as, uh, 
as a family, as a ranch, you know, and uh, with our clients, you know. Uh, so those clients stuck with this horse their whole life, you know, his, his whole life, you know. And uh, so it means a lot, a lot to us. And uh, we, we appreciate the LQHB honoring him and accepting him into the Hall of Fame. And uh, we look forward to, to seeing, you know, some of his last few babies run, you know.